plumbers videos my name is Alan Hart and in today's video I've got a, a really special guest in today's video for you and it's Paul Daly from Daly Plumbing and Heating Captain Backflow on, on Twitter and he's working in a um, he's working in a hand sanitizer factory and he's he's going to show us from start to finish some of what he does in there um, and the transformation um, yeah, there's all, there's all sorts in this video. Talks about air gaps and um, a bit about backflow, etc. So I hope you hope you like this type of video. If you do, please put some comments below. And if you can, if you're on Twitter, go and follow Paul Daly. As I say, he's a he's a super duper plumber. Um, I, I've I started these videos really. Paul was my sort of inspiration if you like from his first video that i watched and i've got a lot a lot of respect for paul he's a really good mate now um so yeah let's uh let's have a look at this video from daily plumbing and eating uh today we're starting a project in this huge warehouse here that you can see it's absolutely massive it's been acquired by a company who are producing hand sanitizer to help battle the COVID pandemic. How many units a week have they, have they got to produce, Matty? Looking at producing a million units per week. Wow. So, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to talk through some of the existing um, my toilet block that I've got here. You can see it's just a bit of a mishmash with whoever's installed it, clearly, either out a plumber or. And not bothered. And not bothered. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit of a mess. Yeah, this accessible toilet, it's uh, it's actually staying, is that? Going into this, which was a kitchen area, same again, uh, whoever's installed it, they've obviously done all the work, but yeah, it's just a mess, a complete mess. Yeah, and he probably uses a roller solder per job, this guy. I must have left his heat mat all along as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this kitchen is now going to be turned into a toilet block. There's a few other blocks going within the area. Yeah, I can see that accessible toilet on the right hand side. So then we're going to change this. This will be a ladies WC. We've got then got a gents WC, which will have two toilets in there, uh, two urinals and a scrub sink, which will be built in this area. It'll then carry on further down. And you can see on the drawing, we've got a bit of a canteen area for all the staff. Uh, kitchen area, I'm going to say small but it's quite a large kitchen area. On the opposite side of this there'll be a stud wall going this way and what we're going to have is some part washing sinks. So the stainless steel sinks that it's for part washing and what they'll do is some of the machinery that they'll have they'll go over and they'll rinse the parts off. Above there we've got a water heater. Yeah I didn't want to frighten everybody Matty by showing them that moment it's not uh, it's not <laughs> adequate it's not adequate so yeah this this water heater it's going to get changed we've got 30 staff coming in coming into this area uh, we're going to put a 300 litre cylinder in it's going to run the toilet block and it's going to provide water down to this to this sink now if you noticed on drawing there were two sinks going in uh, that's because of the staff and they're going to be split on shifts and they want to give them some responsibility Team A, I'll have left hand side, team B, I'll have right hand side. So there'll be two sinks, two microwaves, two dishwashers, two boiling tea points, um, and, and that's it. It's going to be a, a great project. And um, we're part of this COVID 19 um, essential worker team, I guess. Yeah. That's what, along with this hospital work that we're already doing. That's it, backflow boy. That's it, that's the one. Alan, this is going to be super fast on some bits and a bit slow on others as I voice over this. So, we're using a 6 inch diamond corbett. We use 6 inch so that we can get through the wall with the T if need be or the elbow. Um, if you use like a 5 inch, you, you struggle. Um, we're then using our Makita chop saw. This has got a TCT blade on it rather than a abrasive disc. Um, it's a fast, clean cut. It's cold to touch as you unistrut afterwards. Matt is using it laser, marking out, and we're going to get a spacing and set all a strut off the wall. 
We can also use this chop saw for cutting rod and it gives a nice clean cut ready for nuts to screw immediately straight on. So we're just prepping our bracketry at the moment. And you can see here we've just got most of his items are in, in tubs. Uh, right, so I'm using a screw and plug here and that's just because I'm basically fixing onto the floor rather than um, above his heads. And we like to use an end cap and tie it off. Um, just gets rid of any sharp edges and that is just squaring up now off the wall so that everything is nice and level. In this next clip coming up, we are hanging a basin on the wall and it's a breeze block. It's not that thick in the wall and I'm conscious about hanging a basin off the wall because typically in commercial applications, because it's not people's own house, um, it's subject to a lot of additional wear. So when you use chemical resin, you drill the hole, you brush the hole out and you blow the hole or you can vac it. And in this case, we vac it, but I've just not filmed it. So, and then the next important thing is before you inject the resin into the hole, you need to get the mix out of the nozzle correct. So you'll see here, as I bring the resin out of the nozzle, it's a bit of a juicy liquid and then it then changes as the two parts of the resin mix in the nozzle. This is when it is safe to use. So pump the resin in and you'll see I'm extracting the nozzle as I'm pushing in. So I've started at the back and I'm filling towards the front. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the next thing is the studs go in. So because the resin is quite soft initially, um, it does go off fairly quickly depending on temperature so this went off in a matter of minutes because it were about 20 odd degrees in there um, so what I need is something to actually support the stud so that it's level and I'll just use a little bit of packing shim and then wipe off the excess resin before it sets And there we go right so next up the dry liners are turning up and you can see they're starting to install their stud work and we've got this pipe work that's now going behind and we're now bringing stuff through in the right location so this is Matty carrying on with first fix stud walls going up and uh, this is the kitchen area uh, unfortunately I've not filmed loads of the other stuff so this is um, a sanitary way going in in the gents toilet block things have slightly changed We've got a couple of double check valves going in there. Um, this is for backflow protection within the kitchen. That is the part washing sink. There were supposed to be three, but due to the cost and availability, um, the one was opted for in the end and it's sufficient. So we've got a pull down arm on it and uh, a UK3 air gap on the tap. So this is the kitchen area. You can just see the water heater above there that was, that's been installed. Within the kitchen, we've got two oversink water heaters. They have only require actually single check valves, but we've fitted doubles because we can fit a double with isolation. The washing machine's got a double check valve on it with isolation, which you can actually see in that shot. The um, taps themselves have got singles because it's a mixer tap. I don't know how long I'm in this for. Um, not that long actually right so and I'm not sure on this next one if I go into the next basin them taps they actually got replaced because they were from Howden's and I'd asked them to confirm that the taps were as approved and they couldn't I asked them if they could meet schedule for the water supply water fittings regulations and they couldn't right so this is just a blended supply uh, yep yeah, that's me um, that ad <laughs> A TMV on it from Delabby. Or what we're looking at here is the AUK2 air gap on the urinal system, which is a requirement. And also, I don't know if you noticed, to put ceiling height, there is a Thomas Dudley urinal control device. And I think this is just one of the toilets that we're going into. In there, right, we go into warehouse. You can see that staff's turning up now, facilities are starting to be used. Um, that is the basin that I hung with the chemical fixings. Again, that's got a TMV, that's got single checks on it, and the toilet. And you can see there's a bit of expanding foam there, and the decorators have got to make good. And that is what was the existing 
accessible toilet. We're now going to go up onto the uh, roof above this toilet block, little mess area, where we've been installing the unvented cylinder. You can see we're still ongoing with this, Alan, and I've actually not got a finished photograph. But I don't know if you can notice on there, the um, expansion vessel is in line in the pipe rather than using the uh, flexible hose. Um, we've done it that way, it reduces dead legs and allows a bit of a water change within the expansion vessel. And that is Bat Flow Boy. Right, we are now on this next clip into factory. So this is actually um, what they're doing. This is the bottle inside of the hand sanitizer. Um, it was really, really interesting to watch. A lot of our plumbing work where we go um, is in places similar to this. And it is literally like me and Matty. It's like we're in zone, how it's made program. Um, it's very clever. I really, really enjoy working in industry rather than domestic. Um, I, I, I just prefer it. I think it, I think it's exciting. I, I really do. I, I enjoy it. I, I really do. And so does and so does Matty. So they are the, I think they're 500 mil bottles. That's the capping machine. So the operator just puts the um, sports cap on and then this machine winds it down. And the next the next one that it goes to is, you can just see on the right hand side is the labels. It then passes through labeling machine and then it gets um, boxed up and palletized. I think that's it. It's a wrap, is that Alan? I think that's uh, coming up to the end of the video. So, um, I mean, this is from last year, Alan. That just shows how, how busy we are. Um, do my best to, we take a lot of footage, but it's just having the time. Um, so that's boxing up and then it's sellotaping and then off it goes to the pallet. <laughs> that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much for that, Paul and Matty as well. As I say, Captain Backflow on Twitter, so give him a follow. Um, as I say, he does really, really special jobs, really, really good work. A lot of the work that he does, unfortunately, you, you, cannot, you cannot film where he, where he does the work, um, which is a little bit of a shame. But if you've got any videos, if you want to send some videos in, then please get in touch. Um, please put a comment below. Let me know what you think to this type of plumbing. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's it. Th thanks for watching.